Good evening, saints. I'm Dr. Dainty Jones. I serve as apostle of the House That Dignity Built Ministries, and we are um, under the umbrella and, and covering of the Dignity and Direction Group, um, whose mission is to expose resources for education, employment, entrepreneurship, and civic engagement. So we're here tonight, um, dutifully every Wednesday night for a good word Bible study. Our text for tonight is Matthew 9, verses 9 through 13. Um, and I have the honor of teaching tonight. But before I do, we will have opening prayer by Dr. Brian Green. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for this day here, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for how you've already got the day started, Father God. Put things into divine order, Father God. Not our order, Father God, but in divine order, Father God, which means, Lord, you have a, a, a certain discipline for our lives, Father God. You have different connection points that you assign to us, Father God. You have various people that will come through and be a blessing for us here, Father God. And, Lord, it was all ordained, Father God, even before the beginning of time, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that as we go through the day, Father God, that we will always keep our mind on you, Father God, because a mind stayed on you, Lord, you promised to keep us in perfect peace there, Father God. Be with the speaker, Father God, Dr. Dainty, Father God. I know, Father God, you have spoken a word into her spirit there, Father God. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is getting ready to feed unto us. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, we thank thee and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for that beautiful prayer, Dr. Green. Thank you so much. Um, so here is my, <clears throat> excuse me, here is my praise offering for tonight before we move into um, God's mighty word. Chira, you are enough. Oh, Chiron, you are enough, and I will be content in any circumstance. You are Chiron, you are enough. Forever enough, you're always enough, you're more than enough. Forever enough, you're always enough, you're more than enough. I know that I'm loved, I know that I'm chosen. I know who I am, I know what you've spoken, I'm already loved, more than I can imagine, that is enough, ooh, And I will be content in every circumstance. You are Chira, you are enough, you are enough. Amen, amen. 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 And I am so glad to know that Jira is enough. God is always enough. I don't always feel that I'm enough, but I always feel that God is enough. All right, so let's dig into this text. I'll be reading from the New International Version, and it is Matthew 9, verses 9 through 13, and it reads thusly. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, 
he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And on hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy men who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Amen for the reading of God's holy word. I'm going to call tonight's message, Mercy, Mercy Me. <laughs> Mercy, mercy me. Some of you might remember um, that song by Marvin Gaye. Um, oh, oh, mercy, mercy me. And then he would follow. Things ain't what they used to be. And so this sermon, part of the, per the first part of it will be about mercy. It will be about mercy. It has to be because Jesus said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Uh, and that's similar to um, when um, God had told Saul what to do. And then Samuel reminded him that obedience is better than sacrifice. So here we see mercy is better than sacrifice in being obedient to God as well. But what is mercy? And when is it used? How is it used? And where do we witness it? And why do we need mercy? Well, while Marvin Gaye is singing about the ecological environment, Jesus is teaching about changing to a true kingdom environment. And mercy is a key that helps us to get there. Here are some meanings our definitions for the word mercy. It is compassion or forgiveness that's shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to actually punish or to harm, but instead they are exacting mercy. And biblical mercy is like forgiveness, but it's even broader. The, the English mercy translates to several different Hebrew words. For instance, Hanan asserts mercy as God's gracious gift. The basic Hebrew word for mercy, Rahamin, is the plural of the word womb. And it connects mercy to womb emotion. And that is what a mother instinctively feels for a child of her womb. I think most of us are familiar with that type of mercy, the mercy that we can receive from our mothers. And then finally, another word for mercy is hesed. Hesed names the loyal love of covenant which in the later period becomes almost exclusively God's mercy to forgive and to save. Amen. So all of these meanings of mercy are so important. And there's yet one more um, definition of mercy. I'm just going to make a quick change, you all. Thank you for that, allowing me to make that change. Another word for mercy, and this is a, a, a Latin definition um, from the word merced, merced or merces. This type of mercy is price 
paid. <laughs> doesn't that doesn't that ring true? Jesus paid it all. All to him I give. Price paid. Now that's a powerful definition of mercy. He paid the ultimate price, the sacrifice that redeemed us. That's the kind of mercy that God has. And then there is a Greek word for mercy that is eleos or eleos. Um, sometimes that Greek O isn't a hard O, it is a softer O, eleos. And it is actually derived from a word for olive oil. And so all of a sudden, mercy is like an anointing. <laughs> it is like an anointing, mercy. So mercy can let sin just fall off of us, slip off of us. Just like when shepherds would put oil on their sheep to keep bugs out of their nostrils and from going into their ears. Yes, that kind of anointing, mercy covers. All right. And this mercy is what God desires. He wants womb love from us to each other. He wants us to forgive. And he wants us to try to save each other from the enemy so that um, the enemy isn't able to kill or steal or destroy. He already paid the price for us on the cross. So again, mercy like olive oil is an anointing. It's a precious anointing. It's about extending mercy to those um, that the previous church had scorned. And isn't that awesome that Matthew, someone who the previous church had scorned, and when I say that, I'm speaking of uh, the Jewish church um, of Pharisees and Sadducees before Jesus's new kingdom church. Uh, Matthew came from that church and the ones who scorned him, hmm, they had a lot to think about as they looked at Jesus's relationship with Matthew, a once hated tax collector. And I think it's wonderful that Matthew is actually in this segment of verse. He's giving us a testimony about himself. So as he recalls for those who didn't have the chance to meet Jesus in flesh, as he recalls what Jesus said, he is recalling how Jesus treated him. That's what he's doing. He's recalling it. Uh, it's like a video I saw earlier today where Tyler Perry was talking about how he had to correct his young son from um, he wasn't he, he wasn't performing well. The baby just was out of he was out of order. And so Tyler Perry talks about bending down to his baby's level so he can speak to him face to face, person to person. And he said he had after he corrected his son, he had to immediately leave the room and let his wife take over because he was brought to tears as he recalled that he had not been spoken to in that manner when he was a child of the same age. Huh. So that is what Matthew was doing. He was recalling. And as he recalled, he was grateful. And he wants us to have that same type of gratitude. He wants us to have that same type of assurance that we have God's mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's talk a little more about what a tax collector is. So we'll transition from mercy to this concept or this career of a tax collector so that we can get a sense of why was it a big deal for the Pharisees to say, what are you doing sitting with a tax collector? See, I, as a child, I, I was able to understand why it said, oh, Jesus is sitting with a lot of sinners. 
even though I knew even then all of us are sinners. Um, but I never quite grasped what's the big deal of sitting with a tax collector. So just in case this is your question as well, let's dig into that. So during biblical times, the Jews hated tax collectors because tax collectors worked for the Romans. So um, Matthew and his other tax collector friends were all Jewish, but they turned coat for the money. They were kind of like um, pre-slavery um, Uncle Tom's, if you will. Uh, it's that sense of who they were. And so their own people shunned them because the way the tax collectors treated their own people. Um, and it was through a lens of greed. It was just greed. And because of that, Matthew was not um, well-liked. He was also known for being dishonest. So he would collect more during tax collection time than he had to so that he could bump up his profit from the um, people, his community members. And so he truly was driven by greed. And he did this until Jesus chose him. He had a tax booth in Capernaum, and it was on a main highway of that town. And he was required, the Romans required him to actually pay all of the Jewish citizens' taxes in advance. So he had to pay all of the taxes up front. And then so throughout the year, he would make up for his loss, if you will. So he would collect from both citizens and from travelers. That's why he was on the highway, because as they entered the town, he could collect like a toll tax, right? Like we have now on our toll roads. Matthew was making some money, y'all. <laughs> so he was on the highway. He was on the highway collecting funds. Um, and so... The citizens were afraid. So even though they were angry at him and they were even resentful for what was happening, they were afraid because he had the power and the strength of the Roman army behind him. So they didn't dare do anything to him, touch him. They didn't dare. Uh, they left him alone and just some went into debt trying to pay what he asked them to pay. It's kind of like modern uh, payday loan businesses. Once you're in, they make more money from when you're late than they do from when you pay. So they don't mind when you're late. They don't mind because they're going to make even more money. And so this is the type of uh, emotion that was around the idea of um, tax collectors and why they were so hated. But notice in the text that even though Matthew was greedy and he was dishonest, as soon as Jesus called him, he followed. He followed. And then he even gave a dinner for other people as soon as he began to follow so that they could meet Jesus. So he immediately began to evangelize and help show other people who maybe had been shunned also by their loved ones. They weren't able to go to temple. Maybe they were afraid to walk in public uh, because of how people felt about him. He brought them together to show them the lamb. He brought them together to show them the light. Immediately, he immediately stepped into his new role. He put on some new shoes, y'all. That's what Matthew did as soon as he met Jesus. And then 20 years later, he writes this gospel that we've been studying since January. This gospel was written by a man who was once hated, a man who was once dishonest, a man who was once far too greedy for his good. That's 
who we're studying. We are studying his word. Matthew, Matthew, the tax collector, is whose word we are studying. Matthew, who was born with the name Levi, and then he gave him, I'm not sure if he gave himself his new name or if Jesus did. I, I didn't find that Jesus had named him, renamed him Matthew. So he might have taken it upon himself to do so. But if any of you have done some more research on Matthew and you know otherwise, uh, feel free to share that knowledge with us. Um, and as I said, Matthew probably couldn't go to temple before he met Jesus. Now, can you think of people today um, who churchgoers shun and look down on and won't eat with or won't fellowship with today? I bet you know some people. I bet you know the groups they represent um, or the sins they represent. They're like Matthew. And this word is showing us that Jesus wants inclusion. It's like our country and uh, some of our state governments are um, talking about DEI, uh, diversity and equity and inclusion. Jesus was about equity and inclusion and diversity. He makes room in his kingdom. We are all God's children. We just have to decide if we are going to follow or not. We can leave anything we've done in the past behind. We can leave it behind and start anew. And Jesus here is speaking to the church. He's speaking to the church. He's not speaking to the outsiders in this word. He's speaking to us, the leaders of his church. He wants us to have mercy, not the sacrifice but have mercy, have mercy for his people. For his word says that he desires mercy, not sacrifice. And he reminds us, I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Oh, mercy, mercy me. Things ain't what they used to be. No, they're not. For the church is a new church. The church is a church that represents what Jesus wanted. He wanted a different temple. He wanted it to be inclusive. He wanted it to be compassionate. He wanted it to be about the truth and the light. And he wanted us to be free. Amen. 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 Well, that is my message for today. And now it is time for one of my favorite parts of our Bible study. It is time for our takeaways. Who would like to go first? Is someone talking already? Hello? Elder oh. Glover, is that you? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. All right. What were you saying? Mm -hmm. Did you say just a minute? I'm here. Oh, all right, sir. And did you want to share your takeaway? Yes. Wonderful. But I was about to say that mercy works two ways. Jesus showed mercy. Yes. That Therefore, we should show mercy. When I say we, I'm talking about the church. Yeah. There are a lot of folks who are less fortunate 
and some of us that's in the church, and some of the people tends to look down on them. Amen. That's not, that's not what Jesus wants us to do. Yeah. He wants us to show mercy and to have mercy. That's my takeaway. Thank you so Amen. much for that takeaway. Amen. Thank you so much. Shall we have another takeaway? Um, I'll go next. Um, I like, uh, Dr. Dainty, what you shared uh, when you said Christ paid, as you were given a definition of mercy. Yes. And when you shared that one, you know, what just went through my mind is, you know, a lot of times after we have uh, done an action, and we might repent over it, that sometimes the enemy wants to bring it back to us about what we already repented over. Mm -hmm. And now when you said the price paid, now what it really puts me in mind of is, you know, every time these afterthoughts want to come, I could just say price paid. It's been paid for already. <laughs> it was already covered by the blood there, which means that if we go through a day and we make a mistake, we can just simply just say price paid. It's paid for there. Uh, and realize that 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 the, that the Lord has already paid for it for us, so we can go free. We shouldn't be walked around all entangled up, feeling unworthy about something in our past. No matter Amen. how big it is, how small it is, no matter how many years, it doesn't matter. Our price paid. So when you said that one there, I just began to celebrate and just lift my hands up and said, "Hey, it is. It has been paid for, and it's paid in full." Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that response on price paid. And I'm going to try to uh, put that into practice myself by saying price paid. <laughs> Amen. Do we have another takeaway? Hello. Did we, did anyone else want to share? I will share. All right, awesome. Um, I, I love to take away about finding out the history um, and the business sense and the business etiquette and how yeah. many times do we as Christians apply that to our lives? Are we going to be diligent in our business etiquette and our, in our thoughts and our process when it comes to business. So even though he didn't actually do everything right per se, the fact that he had the desire and the, um, how, how can I say it? The get up and go yeah. um, attitude. I think we should not only apply that um, in our personal lives or in our business lives, but also to the ministry. Are we going to get up and go? Do we have the desire to sit by the streets or in places that are unconditional um, or things that are not traditional in order to bring God glory and honor? So that's mine. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that takeaway. Yes. Will, will we walk the way he walked um, and, and not be um, so afraid of being different? Um, um, from what we think we're supposed to do. Um, and thank you, Minister Jones, also for your message. I see your message in the chat. Thank you so Amen. much. Amen. All right. Do we have any other takeaways before we uh, talk about our um, key verses? Yeah, I had one. Yes. Yeah. Um, the one I have is uh, when you ask the question about do you have any uh, or, I mean, answer to uh, something Jesus said but about equality or something. But uh, what it was was I went, I went to a church at one time where uh, they say they were going to feed the hungry. So when I went, I worked in the kitchen. And helped, and it wasn't the hungry. It was uh, people who worked at other companies that was gonna give offerings when they ate. 
but the uh, hungry man was sitting at the back door. He had to eat outside while the uh, company people had tables already set for them and all. I thought that wasn't equality. Yes. As a church. So uh, that's why I take away that everybody should have mercy. They should have mercy for everybody because that person didn't have mercy for me. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. That what a what a picture you painted. What a picture you painted. And that's so different from what happened at Matthew's table. They were inside his home eating with Jesus. And the Pharisees were still invited and they were able to see. Um, so what a difference. There was no one sitting outside. Uh, Matthew included everyone to be able to be close to Jesus to be close to the church. Uh, so yes, we need to do better. We need to do better. Thank you so much for sharing that. Kind of heart-wrenching. But thank you for sharing it. All right, it's time then for our um, key verse. And um, I wanted to know your thoughts about if it's, Verses 12 and 13. What do you think about 12 and 13? 12 reads, on hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And then 13 reads, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. What are your thoughts about those being at least some of our um, key verses? Good that, to me. Sounds good. Okay. Are there any other verses that we believe we should include with those? Should I include um, when Jesus asked Matthew to follow him? Verse 9. What are your thoughts on that, on verse 9? It says, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. And he says, follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Do you think we should include um, those? I mean, that extra one? Uh, yes, sir. The original group of, of scripture was from nine all the way to 13. And so I'm asking, should we include nine, 12 and 13 as key verses? I think 12 and 13. Okay. All right. So 12 and 13 seems to be our thoughts on one accord. Yes. Okay. And 12 and 13 it is. I appreciate that so much. Okay, wonderful. Um, uh, Minister Kimberly, may I call on you for our uh, closing prayer for tonight? Sure. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for being God. Father, we know that you are the only true and living God, that there is none other besides you. There is none like you. 
So Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that's new every morning. And Father, we thank you for this word that has been taught so well tonight. Father God, I ask that you would take this word and hide it in our hearts. And Holy Spirit, that you would bring it back to our remembrance when, when it is needed so that we can apply it to our lives. Father God, I thank you for the teacher and I pray that you would pour into her just as she's poured into us, Father God, that you would give her increased blessings, wisdom, and knowledge, Father God, and give her strength to endure every test that she may face. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to come together and learn. God, we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Father, because we know that it's nobody but you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that prayer. Thank you. It's another beautiful prayer this evening. Um, all right, saints. And so um, we just want to make sure that uh, listeners know that we uh, ministers are available um, for different uh, services. So weddings, funerals, baptisms, uh, coaching, um, teaching. And so if you come to our About Us page on the website at dignityshouse.org and scroll down, you can contact us here on this page for request. Also, if you feel blessed and led to um, give an offering or a donation, it's a tax deductible donation. You can click on our e-giving tab and on the donate button and you'll um, immediately receive a uh, receipt for your gift. And then also, if you are enjoying our messages, then please consider um, subscribing to our ministry channel. It's Dainty G. Jones. Uh, you'll be joining a global community. We have listeners here in Australia and Tobago. Um, it is growing in England. Uh, and so we would love to have you uh, to be part um, of this a group that is passionate about learning about the king and to know that we are kingly people as well. We are royal priests. Uh, please know how special you are in the kingdom. Well, that is it for tonight uh, for a good word Bible study. We welcome you to join us again next week um, and also uh, to watch the videos so you can study and hear it uh, in your own speed um, at your own um, appointed time. I'm Dr. Dainty Jones. I serve uh, again as apostle of the house that Dignity Build Ministries. Blessings, blessings, blessings.